With laptops and screens on our desks and smartphones in our pockets, reading books has become more accessible than ever. I mean, I probably have like 200 books here with me. And you know what? I don't even have to read them. I can have them read for me by a professional lector. In general, I believe that every way to read a book is a good way. If it helps you to read more, if it makes you read more, it's a good way to read a book. However, there is an exception. As programmers, we read a lot of technical books, and technical books are very different beasts. They contain a lot of diagrams, images, tables, and code examples. And, you know, we don't read them for pleasure, but in order to learn something. Hi everyone, it's Gregory here, you're watching Not Only Code, and today we're talking about different ways to read technical books. We talk audiobooks, paper, ebook reader, tablet, and laptop, and we'll choose the best way the way to read technical books that allows us to get as much of them as possible. Let's start. Okay, so what do I want when reading a technical book? First, I want an easy way to highlight some information and to write some notes. You know, when I read technical books, I often want to add some annotations and I often want to mark some important parts. Second, I want an easy way to stop and reread some part if I don't understand something, and I also want to be able to jump between different parts to see some references, maybe some footnotes. Three, I want to easily understand and digest any type of content, whether it's just text or code example or some diagram or an image. And finally, I want to be able to read wherever I go, whether I sit on a couch in my living room or in a train or on a bench in a park. Let's start with audiobooks. Spoiler, the absolutely worst way to read technical books. In general, audiobooks are great. I've been using Audible and other apps for years, and I've listened to tens of audiobooks on different topics like history, psychology, or leadership. It's wonderful to be able to listen to a book while jogging, walking in a park, or even doing some house chores. Recently, though, I made a mistake of buying a couple of technical audiobooks. Nope, not programming in Python though they are also available in audio format. I'm not kidding. No, I bought a couple books about DevOps and Site Reliability Engineering. In general, the books were good, but I've already forgotten a lot of content, and that's because they were in audio format, which makes it absolutely horrendous to read technical books. Highlighting is so troublesome. You can spend one or two minutes trying to just make a clip of the part that you want to remember. The only way to reread some part is to pick up your phone, open the app and click back two or three times, hoping that you will get into the right spot. Moving between different parts of the book is almost impossible unless you have tons of small chapters there. And of course, forget about looking at any kind of image unless you're willing to pick up the phone and find the attached PDF and look at it there. On top of that, I really have problems with focusing on audiobooks. You know, when I'm walking around the park and I'm listening to an audiobook, I constantly something distracts me. And it doesn't matter if I listen to a novel, because if I miss a sentence or two, that's not a problem. But if I miss one sentence in a technical book, that might make a big difference. So yeah, while you might see a lot of technical audiobooks on Audible with five stars, be skeptical of them. Listening to audiobooks is not good for technical books. Next are paper books. Classic. Everyone loves them. They're widely available, they look great on the shelves, and this feeling of flipping a page, of smelling a paper, for some reason, is just magical. Now let's see how paper books compete with other types when it comes to technical reading. See, can I stop and reread any part of the book? Easy. Can I flip the pages and easily move between different parts of the book? Very easy. Can I read code examples, see images and diagrams? Unless your publisher screwed up the job? Yes, absolutely I can. Can I highlight important parts and add notes? Well, yes, I can. I can write on the margins, but later when I go back to my notes, it's kind of a problem. I need to mark the pages and I need to remember what's where. So yeah, even though they are not perfect, and highlighting and making notes is messy, paper books overall are a good way to read technical books. Now let's talk about ebook readers. This little buddy here has been with me for more than 10 years. Well, not exactly this one. Uh, I broke the first one. This one has been here for maybe five years. Still, five years and I've read tens if not hundreds of books on it. Six inches screen 
it's easy on your eyes, it feels like paper, has a touch screen, no buttons, it lasts like a week on the battery, what's not to love about it? Well, there are some problems. First, images, diagrams and tables, they're okay-ish, as long as you use proper format, <coughs> not PTF, then you should be fine and you can often zoom in to see the whole content. Still, the 6 inches screen is quite limiting, especially when you read a longer code example and you have to move back and forth between pages. Stopping to reread some part is very easy. Jumping between different parts of the book, that depends whether the book contains interlinks or not. My problem is that the screen in Kindle is quite slow and unresponsive, so I find it quite distracting when I want to quickly jump to another page and then back, it just takes a while. Highlighting and taking notes is mm, quite frustrating. It is possible. With a touch screen you can just mark a part that you want to highlight, but if you mark a bit too much or a bit too little, it's not very easy to modify it and typing on this screen is just unpleasant. It is slow, it's unresponsive and I make a lot of typos when using Kindle and then I have to correct them and because of that I don't take a lot of notes when reading on a Kindle. Still, despite this, I think it's a good way to read technical books. Even though it's not perfect, everything here is possible and it's so small that you can just take it everywhere. Next, laptops and desktop computers. I know, I know, a lot of people might be thinking, what the hell, it's a blasphemy, that's not the way to read books. But I call bullshit. The truth is that having a book on a large screen with your favorite keyboard can be very pleasant. You can read any types of books, including PDFs, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can easily highlight any part you want and taking notes is just so nice. What are the downsides? Well, there's mobility. Probably your laptop doesn't fit in the back pocket of your pants, right? So you don't want to take it everywhere. And if you're reading on a desktop computer, then you have to actually sit at the desk. On top of that, while ebook reader has this e-ink screen that feels like paper, that is very good for your eyes, the laptop screen emits a lot of light and it's not as easy for our eyes. So you know, you're sitting 8 hours a day in front of the screen while working and then what, another 2 in front of the same screen while reading a book? Not exactly a tempting perspective. Still, in summary, if you have a book where you want to copy some code example from the book to your text editor, there's just no better way than your laptop or a desktop computer. And despite the downsides, I think that it's actually a good way to read technical books. And the last way for today, my personal winner, a tablet. When I bought this iPad, I was quite skeptical about reading books on it. I was thinking like, I don't feel like it just feels like taking a laptop with me. I want to keep reading on paper and Kindle. But then I started and I started highlighting stuff and I started taking notes and I just love it. I absolutely love reading books on iPad. So let's start with the good stuff. Highlighting and taking notes is so easy. There's autocorrect here, so whenever I make a typo, it's just automatically corrected. If I'm tired of using the screen keyboard, I can just attach the Apple Magic keyboard and type on it on the table. Flipping between pages is similar to ebook reader, except that it just feels smoother because the screen doesn't have to refresh on every page. You can just, you know, it feels kinda like flipping a paper book. I can take the iPad with me everywhere, though it will not fit in my pocket. I have to take a backpack with me, so it's not as portable as Kindle, but more than a laptop. Also, while I can read it while sitting on the couch, it's still 11 inches, so it's not very comfortable. On the other hand, though, I can hold it in a vertical or horizontal position, so if I want to see some larger diagram or table, I can just flip it and have a very nice view here. Similarly to laptops, the downside is that the screen is harder for your eyes than the ebook reader, so that's a trade-off. Still, iPad has absolutely become my favorite way to read technical books. And the number of notes that I started taking since I started reading on iPad skyrocketed. Remember folks what I said in the beginning, whatever works for you is a good way. And your preference is more important than what some random guy says on the internet. I currently use all five ways that I mentioned today to read books. And when I read technical books, when I read programming books, I use mostly Kindle or iPad. Let me know in the comments what's your preferred way and whether you have a strong opinion about it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope to see you next time. Take care. Thank you.